So in the month of June, I had two weeks vacation and that gave me a lot of time to enjoy a lot of movies, which I definitely did. I watched just about 20 movies and yeah, let's get into it. Last month, I bought a Wes Anderson movie bundle. So I started off the month with the fantastic Mr. Fox. I'm always really amazed with stop motion pictures and it was really cool seeing Wes Anderson's unique style being implemented into that animal world. Really great watch, I highly recommend it for anyone who wants to check out a stop motion movie. My mom introduced me to this documentary called Alphabet. It analyzes the modern school system and shows how there's not much room for our own imagination and creativity. For documentaries in this series, I just won't be giving them rankings because I view a documentary differently than when I watch a movie. I haven't really seen any movies of Edgar Wright, but my best friend and I decided to check out Baby Driver, which I've heard a lot about and we both really loved it. What stood out immediately was of course the editing. It was edited so perfectly to the songs, but also just like entire action sequences were edited perfectly to the music. And wow, I thought that was really cool to see how much effort was put into the editing and I find it really inspiring to uh, do something similar like that one day. Then I finally watched Portrait de la Jeune Fille en Feu, which I was really looking forward to seeing. It's a slower paced movie, but I felt so involved in it and I felt as I was there with the characters. I find that Carson Runquist described the movie perfectly on his letterboxed review, which I will read to you now. You ever find yourself staring at a bonfire, just zoning out and watching the flame change every second? Feeling the heat, the energy, the anger, the tension? You get what I'm saying. It's a beautiful hypnotic thing. And that's exactly what Portrait of a Lady on Fire is. The only difference being that this brought me to tears in ways a bonfire never could. I then watched Capote to see Philip Seymour Hoffman's Oscar winning performance. He portrayed Truman Capote very well and even watched out for small details like the way he smoked a cigarette. Other than his amazing acting, the movie just wasn't anything special for me. My best friend and I decided to spend the weekend in the Swiss Alps and while we weren't hiking up snowy mountains, we decided to watch the original Star Wars trilogy. What more do I have to say about it? I grew up with Star Wars. I've been a fan since I don't know how long, even before I seen the movies. I've been playing with the Legos, uh, reenacting some of the fight scenes. It's just, man, it's, it's Star Wars. That's really all I can say about it. It's amazing. This saga will always have a special place in my heart. Although I'm not the biggest fan of the newest trilogy, but yeah, that's a story for a different time. We also watched Solo, a Star Wars story. I'm honestly a really big fan of these anthology films like Rogue One and Solo that they have brought out. The movie does have a bit too much fan service, but other than that, I still really liked it and I really love, and I really love Donald Glover's performance as the iconic Lando Calrissian. My parents and I then watched Score, a film music documentary. I recommend this movie to anyone who loves movies with iconic film scores in them. It was great seeing how important music is in a film and how the music can become even more iconic than the movie itself. I definitely got goosebumps a couple of times while watching this movie when the theme songs of Rocky, Star Wars or Jurassic Park came on. Christopher Nolan is one of my favorite present day directors and his World War II movie Dunkirk was great as well. I love how he plays with time in his movies and how he is able to tell a story in a non-chronological order and it still makes sense and builds up suspense. The Last Black Man in San Francisco is just another visually pleasing A24 film. It had great cinematography and editing in it, but other than that, I was kind of disappointed by the movie. I didn't know quite what to expect, but yeah, I just didn't enjoy it that much. I really liked the unique feel and story that it had, but yeah, somehow it just didn't connect with me. Le Fabuleux Destin d'Amélie Poulain is a movie I've been wanting to see for a really long time now and also finally got to watch it. It's another beautiful French movie 
And yeah, I'm really starting to enjoy French cinema more and more. Really everything in the movie is beautiful, whether it's the stories, the characters, the colors, the editing, cinematography, everything about the movie is just really beautiful. That's how I describe the movie itself. Also, I really enjoyed the narration throughout the movie and thought that it enhanced the entire experience. I'm very happy that I finally got to watch this classic masterpiece. First Reformed is another A24 film which I didn't quite get at first. The ending left me at first a bit confused, but after doing some research I got to understand it better and it made more sense to me. It's still just a very special movie, but Ethan Hawkey's performance was great and he definitely should have been at least nominated for an Academy Award. Until the last week of June, I had watched two French movies. I then watched the third one and it was my favorite out of the three. I watched La Haine. It told the story of three young men in a ghetto in Paris during the early 90s and the police brutality that they had to live with. Vincent Gassel delivered a great performance and the ending was really eye-opening. The first Woody Allen movie I watched that didn't play in New York was Vicky Cristina Barcelona. The movie had a great cast and I really liked the artsy feel to it. Also the soundtrack I find very beautiful and my mom has been listening to it ever since the movie first came out. So I was really glad that I finally got to watch the movie where these beautiful songs play in. As I mentioned before, Christopher Nolan is a master at playing around with time in his movies. But I'd say the best example where he does that other than Inception is Memento. Because it's one of his earlier works, it's definitely not as known as Inception or Interstellar, but I was really fascinated how he was able to tell a story basically backwards. You see, the main character suffers from short-term memory loss, and so the audience was put into the same situation as him, where we were constantly wondering what happened before this scene. After each scene plays out, you feel like you've gained a lot of new knowledge about the story, but at the same time, you actually have more questions about it. The month of June, I started and ended with a Wes Anderson movie. The last movie I watched was The Darjeeling Limited. Adrian Brody, Owen Wilson, and Jason Schwartzman play three brothers in this movie on a train in India. As usual, his movie contained beautiful colors and witty jokes. Compared to his other works, it wasn't anything special, but it's really hard not to love a Wes Anderson movie. As in the last few months, I found some beautiful masterpieces which I now consider some of my favorite movies. And again, I would love to share some of my favorites from last month with y'all. Although this month I have four movies to recommend. First off, I would recommend the three French movies that I watched. Portrait de la jeune fille en feu, Le fabuleux destin d'Amélie Poulain, et La haine. All were great and were unique in their own way. And the fourth movie I'd recommend is Memento, since I find it's really underrated and not that well known, and I want to bring awareness about this movie to y'all. So go check out some of these movies, let me know if y'all have seen any of them and how y'all like them, and I'll see y'all next month.